morning everybody happy thursday um i was just starting this vlog and as i looked into the camera that door was its usual dumping zone um towels there was a huge bed sheet kev's jumper that he discards he comes in every day he takes his hoodie off throws it over that door then another person will come in throw it on that door and in the end i'm like i'm surprised that door's still on its hinges because everyone lobs all of their belongings on it um, and i chuck washing over it but the sun's out today so i might actually the extent of the excitement of being a stay-at-home mum um is that you get excited when the sun's out so you can do some washing i do need to strip the beds and get that all washed and put out on the line um however the other day when i did that it started to drizzle i was like are you having a laugh it's like it knew it was like oh she's gonna do some washing let's uh, let's rain and um, anyway i hope you all had a good week hope everyone's having a nice one um it's been chaotic here as always um sienna is currently in the front room she might bob her head out in a minute, but she's currently in the front room watching the telly, um, not at school. Things are really, really difficult um, when it comes to Sienna and schooling at the moment, like really tricky. And I did like a really, <laughs> a very honest vlog the other day, which I decided not to post. I was really upset. I just blubbed my eyes out down the phone to the doctor's receptionist um, because I dropped Sienna to school, head spinning off her shoulders um, in a real state and I just, I knew that we can't carry on like this any longer. It's not fair on her and it's not fair on me um, and the rest of the family, it's just been awful. So I did do a really honest and raw vlog about it and I the reason I decided not to post it is because I'm not mentally stable enough myself to deal with having people attacking me on my insecurities not even my insecurities on the things that I'm struggling with at the moment because when you've got people that just love to hate you it doesn't matter what you do and say they will twist it and manipulate it to their advantage to attack you Mrs she's got a sore gum that's the reason she's not actually in school today is because she's got a really, really wobbly tooth at the front and she's touched it so much and, and wobbled it so much that she's actually made the gum really red and really angry and really sore. Um, so we've just been... Oh yeah, I forgot I needed to put this in the, in the um, fridge. We've just been to Morrison's and picked up some um, lunchbox refillers because if you watch the grocery haul and i said that i i needed to buy more because sienna was now back on lunch boxes but i hadn't actually bought that much more um yeah it's, there isn't enough food for lunch boxes tomorrow as well as sienna's continuous snacking um so i have to go and buy more like lunch box stuff you don't like it oh that means i have to eat it doesn't it mm, no they're not that nice I'm not a jelly right you have a jelly then no, you're not having three jellies. You can have two, okay? But you need to find a teaspoon. You might just look in the dishwasher. They've only got tablespoons in there. I was looking this morning when I was making lunch boxes. Two seconds. You're not having to be washed this. I forgot to look in the dishwasher last night. So I'm going to have to wash, um, reload it in a second. We've got half of more items in it and then put it on. Right, you go in the front room with those then, even though you're not supposed to eat in the front room. Good girl. I want a plate to put them on. A plate to put them on? Because I need some more washing up, obviously. Um, but yeah, that goes to more lunchbox fillers. And I'm going to watch Topsy and Tim. going to watch Topsy and Tim. She absolutely loves Topsy and Tim at the moment. It's like her favourite um, kids' programme to watch. Can you do that? Oh, oh no, we're both dropping things. Go on then. Oh, come on, Charlie. So, so yeah, anyway, um, I found that I feel like as much as and this is what i said or part of what i said in the 17 minutes that i verbal diaried at my camera in tears the other morning is that i really welcome and appreciate the support that i get from the lovely people that watch our videos and some of the support that i can get from people that watch these videos is really invaluable because there's you know, I've got my family and my friends and they're all going to pick me up and give me a rub on the back and say, you're doing a really good job, you've got this and all of that. But 
they can comfort me in a comforting way, um, but not so much in a practical way because none of them are going through what we're going through. And whereas if I talk openly on here, I know that we've got quite a few people following us who are who have children with additional needs and can really support us in a more in a more practical way. I really appreciate that. But with me, as fragile as I am at the moment, I decided I wasn't going to post that video because I I can just hear it already. I already I don't even need to look for the horrible people. With that, I, I already know enough about them to know exactly what they're going to be saying. And that's things like, um, that child doesn't have autism, she just needs discipline, she's a spoiled brat, it's a parenting problem, social services should be involved. You know, I know all the things that they, they say, and I know that it's all, and as much as I know it's all crap, it's really um, difficult when you're in a, in a fragile situation to only focus on the good things, that only like absorb the good, because you can have all of this good, you could have like, I don't know, a hundred people sat on this shoulder cheering you on, and one person sat on this shoulder in this ear telling you that you're a terrible parent and a terrible person, and you stop hearing this hundred people in this ear, and you only hear this one person. Um, and that's, you know, a lot of people will say like, oh, you know, there was there's things that have been said about Summer, and how she doesn't she's not seen very often or wasn't being seen very often in the videos someone left a comment on the community post and i said the reason you don't see summer is because she is a 16 year old girl who's going through all of the hormones that are involved with being a 16 year old girl who has got her gcse's coming up and a whole load of pressure i do not want her to have any more pressure added because people um will be unkind and I know that there could be hundreds of people saying that she's a beautiful, wonderful person, but if one person says that she's not beautiful or wonderful, she's only going to hear that person. Um, so that's why I, I stopped involving Summer so much in videos. And to be fair, these videos are more my life anyway than they are the children. Like, I wouldn't say that we're a family channel anymore we were in the early days but things have changed social media's got really quite a scary place to be and it's more now it's more me and when my brother who is the most amazing like person he's got he always just knows the right things to say and he's got so much intelligence he's 26 but i swear he's been here before when he was um a toddler we used to be like he's been here before there's no way this kid is as clever as he is without being here before um, but he came round when I was in absolute bits over what had been posted about us on the internet, um, and he—I didn't even—I knew he was coming round, but I'd forgotten he was coming round. He was coming round with a present for Riley for his birthday, and I just like was in a state, and I was like, I've always been the older sister, the strong one, um, and I was like a blubbering wreck. And he just, he's just amazing. He's absolutely amazing. I love him to pieces. Um, but he said he really wanted me to continue with the channel. Oh, thanks. Can you have a try? Mmm. Oh, they're really strong. They're delicious. Like, go and finish eating them then. You don't get your lunchbox in the car. Your lunchbox is in the car. It's on the table. She's, um, it's only like half past ten in the morning and she's eating her lunch because the ibuprofen I gave her this morning has finally kicked in and she's in a little bit less pain with her gum. So now she just wants to eat everything. Um, everything in sight she wants to eat. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? He was like, oh, you know, the channel will just make it more about you and your journey as being a parent and, and less about the children, which I think it was already going that way anyway. Most of my videos are this, me just talking um, and me talking about the stresses and strains and ups and downs of being a family. Um, but obviously, I've always said that I really struggle um, with how much I should talk about the children and, and what's going on. Um, we'll all talk about young children and, you know, sleepless nights and nappies and, and colic and and wind and all of the, you know, constipation. We know, if I was sat here going, oh, my six week old baby's got terrible constipation um, and hasn't pooed for a week and everything I try isn't working, nobody would bat an eyelid. Nobody, whoever we, nobody would say anything. Um, but if you start talking about other your, old, your children as they get older, people are like, oh, you're putting their whole life, all of their private business, all of their medical business on the internet. 
and I get it, I really do get it, and I just think that there's there's got to be a way that I can make this channel work where I talk about motherhood, but also still, you know, remain respectful of the children. Um, so this is really me blooming going on now, isn't it? Um, so what was I saying? Yeah, there's people on here that give me the best advice about um, Sienna. And I need that because I am um, batting my head against a bloody brick wall at the moment. It's tough. It's really tough. Um, and I don't know what to do for the best. I'm considering taking her out of school because I don't think that she, um, she's just not coping. Um, and I spoke to, after I rang the doctors, the youth mental health supporter called me and I said to her, like, how long, how, for how long do we try to squeeze her into this box? of normal, of what's expected of her in society? How long do we keep trying to make her fit in? And when does doing that become um, a negative thing? Because you think you're doing it for a good reason, like I want her to go to school because I want her to get an education and you go to school to learn and get social skills and all of those things and all of the positives that come from, um, from schooling. But when I'm dropping her to school and she is, literally her head is spinning off her shoulders and she's having to be held whilst I escape. Doors are having to be shut to stop her escaping because she would just run. She's hammering at the doors that she's got bruises up her arms. If anyone notices that she's got bruises up her arms, it's not because I've been holding her arms or squeezing her or beating her. It's because they've got two fire doors um, that they close and she does this with so much aggression and anger because she doesn't want to be there that she bashes the hell out of these doors that she's had bruises up her arms. Um, and I kind of had like that penny drop moment when I was on the phone, when I said something that made me realize something. And I said to the lady on the phone, I said, the only reason Sienna is in school is because I can physically lift her and I can carry her in. If I couldn't physically lift her, she wouldn't go to school. And that was like that, you know, penny drop moment that I thought, you are using your size against her to get her to do something that is against her wishes. And if she was a, I don't know, a 12 year old, like if it was Riley who was kicking and screaming and not wanting to go to school, then I wouldn't be able to pick him up and carry him in. So therefore he wouldn't go. So why should I continue to forcibly use my size against her to get her into school. Um, and I was saying this all to the lady whilst in absolute floods of tears because it is, it's just absolutely soul destroying. When she's in that state, she's not even thinking about anything other than her desperation to flee the situation. Um, so when she's doing all of the things she's doing, it's really hard to see. Um, and I walk out of that school leaving her like that, feeling like I've just dropped her in some sort of institution where she's going to be abused all day, because that's how she reacts, like that she is so unsafe and she needs to get out. And I know that she's safe and I know that she's looked after, but to her, it's it's not a safe place. She doesn't, she doesn't see school as a safe place. And we've been trying to work with Sienna and try, and we are still trying to help her to feel that school is safe but to this day at this present moment we're not making any progress and every day is still the same um, and if we do have a good day which we had two good days last week I as much as we celebrate that and we're like yes she did it I also feel sadness because I know how hard it is for her to do that I know how much she has to it doesn't come naturally to her she doesn't get up in the morning Start, chuck her school clothes on and go off to school with a skip and a jump like most children um, to be able to, to do that means that she has to put a huge amount of effort a conscious effort into being that person and that is another you know that's something I struggle with as well because I just think we're trying to squeeze you into the box of normal we're trying to make you do everything that society deems as normal and at what cost 
is it that we keep doing this? Um, so we are a week. Our school holidays are different again to the rest of the country, I think. We have a week left of school until the Easter holidays. Um, and then we're just going to reevaluate um, after the holidays. We've discussed um, between me and Kev about having a week of like fun stuff, doing like, you know, school holiday fun, and then having the second week where we introduce some home learning and do like an hour a day of like home learning, which is why if you saw my Instagram the other day, I asked if anyone homeschools, the people that reached out to me and said they did, I asked what resources um, they recommend because I was going to get myself some stuff in sorted and then we're just going to see how she responds to maybe learning at home um but yeah ultimately i'd love nothing more than for her to go into school in a lovely school uniform with a hop and a skip and a jump with a smile on her face um but it's not it's not how things work for her and it, and it never has been and um, this isn't just something that's just happened it never has been like ever since she started preschool at three we've had problems but they've just really like escalated um in the last in the last what month are we in now march so since she went into year one is when it started to you know so anyway here she is what are you up to eating. what babe eating. eating still eating and this is another thing she does she never stops she's always always looking for something to pick at and eat um unless she's busy you have to keep her her occupied because if she's not occupied she wants to be eating um so yeah there we go guys i probably should have just posted the um how long are we talking 19 minutes the upset in the car one was only 17 minutes um so you probably all clicked off 17 minutes ago yes love you need this oh my god you've just eaten two jellies now you're eating their petty for loo what letters on that lid you've got a letter what letter is it a y yeah. for Yak. Yak. Do you know what a yak is? No, is there a picture of a yak? Can you have a look? Yeah, look. It's a type of um, cow. Mummy. Yes, Ian. Can we go to Hobbycraft? Can we go to Hobbycraft? Yeah, girl. Oh, do you? I'm really not sure I could afford to home educate her, if I'm honest, because she loves to just craft all the time. All day, every day, crafting. Um, so yeah, but anyway, let's get this kitchen tidied up because it currently looks like a bomb's gone off. Also really quickly, because I know this video is already like 18 minutes long. Um, for anyone that missed the community post yesterday, because I know if you're watching on like the television, you don't see the community post. Um, but if you're following Felicity's leg journey at the moment, her poorly leg, we went back to see the orthopedic orthopedic consultant yesterday no the pediatric orthopedic consultant and we're still not we still don't have a definitive diagnosis she said it would be one of two things one she's either just really really scared um and has lost the mobility of her leg because she's so terrified to use it um or charlie is just a pigeon um Charlie's fine with like cats and birds when you're out for a walk, but if they're in his garden, we've got an issue, I like a really big issue. <laughs> and he just, you scratch the door and I'm like, I know you don't need to go out for a wee. I know you're just going out this bark at the birds. Um, but yeah, no, it's either that she's scared or she could have possibly have, which I was fearing and what I, I believe it probably is most likely. And that's a um, meniscal tear which could have potentially, it can tear and then it can flick up and lodge in the joint, which is what stops the knee from being able to bend. Um, it could be that and the MRI could have missed it. So the MRI is getting reviewed again by another, by the musculoskeletal team. And then if they think that it needs to be repeated, they'll be in contact. If they don't think it needs to be repeated, she's also being referred for physio. So we should hear from a physio within the next week. And annoyingly, she won't actually be seen again at the clinic for another four to six weeks. And the thought of her being on those crutches for another week makes me feel sick, let alone another four to six weeks. Um, so yeah, things are not going 
I'm not, you know, fixing and progressing as quickly as I'd like them to be, but I guess I can only do what I can do. I did start searching last night, the possibility of taking her private, um, and it's £350 just for a consultation, £450 for an MRI, so you're looking at like £1,000 plus to get a second opinion at the private hospital. Um, so that's, yeah, that's not happening. Um, but I'm just, fingers crossed, that we hear something in the next week about either a repeat MRI or a um, physio appointment. I might as well just move in to the hospital because I spend half my flipping life at either the hospital or at the physio um, between summer and now Felicity. Also, Reese is home today, so I'm quickly going to hang this washer now. When Reese and Bella have been away all week, they've been in London, they've seen three musicals. One, I couldn't tell you what it is, and the other was Mrs. Doubtfire, which he said was absolutely amazing, and Sister Act. So they've been to London, they came home last night, they got home quite late, and Bella like lives a stone throw away from the college, so they stayed at Bella's last night, and I'm gonna go meet them for lunch as soon as I've put, oh, excuse me, as soon as I put this washing out, I'm gonna go and pick them up. Who's ready to see Reese? Hey, Reese, Reese, Reese. Have you missed him the mostest? Yeah. I can see. I can see him around this corner. Are you ready? Yeah. Who are you most excited to see? Reese or Bella? Reese. Reese, here they come. <laughs> <laughs> are you that excited? Right, careful of your lipstick. Careful of your lipstick on his yeah, Reese's white so jumper. <laughs> you missed him that much. Right, Bella can shotgun now. Yeah. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Hello. Are you going to take her? Hi. Are you filming? Yeah. Hello. Right. I'm going back to London now. Bye. Look at my boss water. How posh is that? I know, they're mental, aren't they? Like... Oh, it's plastic, not it's glass. Quick, because I need to um, pull out before another car needs to get in. Jenny, you look so pretty. She's it's so excited. We just sung Unwritten, didn't we, Reese? Yeah. In our singing lesson. I I'm surprised you had to go to college today. I know, that's what my mum said. I thought they'd give you the morning off to like, you know, have yeah. a lie in. But alas, here we are. Oh. Is it fun? Yeah. Oh, guess what came? What? My driver's license. Yay! I got my driver's license um, this week. I got um, discriminated against in London. Oh, did you? So me and Finn went up to the tag uh, what? Watch oh God, on Regent Street <laughs> yeah. and looked in the window and it was just looking like a rebel watch in the window and the big security guard in the door came up, locked the door and shut the curtains on us. Really? Yeah. What, because you were looking yeah, at we were watches? Looking at watches in the window. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, teenagers. Didn't something like that happen last year? And tell them about the, tell them about the guy stripping. Uh, yeah, stripping? Yeah, street forward in Covent Garden. He's being horrible to all Telling teenagers. every teenager to go away but you want to do all the little kids to come forward. Oh. And then he got a five pound down and said, I want you kids to compete for this five pound. And then all the teenagers were like being really annoying because they, he was being rude to us and we were, we were being rude back. Well, no, we, yeah. he, he didn't we want were, us to stand specifically. watching, he telling us all to, he, he basically, even our, our it's another school. The public, he said, F off. <gasps> yeah, he was being so off. rude to all of us oh teenagers. And then this, this really nice man, old man, he was like, I'm a retired teacher, you're being horrible, da, da, da. Oh. And, and then, then, he, he and then he was like, how many people here agree with this old man? And then everyone went, woo! <laughs> and then... Yeah, he got all the kids to go forward and he stripped down to his pants. <gasps> yeah, he did. No way! Yeah. Do you know how much fucking ice cream was at the Shaftesbury? Oh my god. Five pounds. I said to Bella, do you want an ice cream? Oh uh, yeah, can I have chocolate please? I was like, yeah, I'll treat you to an ice cream. Five pounds! <laughs> it's oh, like shit. he loaded up and I saw your face drop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure if we look back at the vlog when you came back from London last year, something happened. Yeah. There was pigeon in Finn's room. Oh my god. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah, what was the hotel like this year? God. Uh, same as last year. It was fine. There's five of us in my room. Five? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, so yes Sienna. I'm gonna go Bruce there. <laughs> really? Your voice sounds so cute. Yeah. She's got a really raspy voice because she's um, so screamed cute. so much at um, I'm school. <laughs> she said that she missed you more, but she's um, holding Bella's hand. I yeah. Um, Sienna, who did you miss most? <laughs> on your feet, on your feet. On your feet, lose your seat. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, look at 
for my cool trick. Okay, okay. I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm too big. I was like, don't do that, that will definitely hurt. Um, but yeah, she can't even stand the, the feeling of me gently um, rubbing cream into her leg. So it's not good. That's a big one. I'm just cooking the tea. Why is that so small? Have some. Um, yeah, because there's only six of us to eat tonight because everyone else has sorted themselves out. Jamie and Brooke have had Nando's. Reese and Bella are at Bella's. So it's only, I think Summer's asleep, because um, I've not seen her since we got back. I know she's, 
Um, I was watching TV and she. Um, but yeah, um, just doing. In the garden. Kevin's down outside sorting out our. We've just been to Wix's and picked up some fence boards. Yeah, that never going on today. Oh, is it too much other stuff he's doing first? No, got a Can you just put one on in that big gap where the rabbit keeps sitting? You've got a massive thorn bush through my side. No, there's he's... more gaps now, so just shut the old wood off. Oh, God, we're going to have to go pay then once he's finished helping himself to the dog's food. I'm sure that's not actually, I'm sure that's not actually very good for you, um, Custard. I'm sure well, that's probably not very good for you at all. Oh, yeah, why are you putting it to worry, Penny? You're worrying monsters now. She won't find it. I oh, will she not? Because when Luke is hiding it under our pillow, what we're there, she'll get it in your side of her. She'll find it. Right, well, there you go then. Okay. Go, go put it under your pillow. It's in there. Yeah, it's in there. Um, lost my train of thought now. Yeah, we went to Wix's to buy some feather boards and some fence paint. Kev did this all whilst he was at work, ordered it all. He just said to me, when you, when um, I finish work, can we go to Wix's and pick it all up? So. The plan is to fill all of the, because we've got like a um, picket type fence. What are you doing, Les? Oh, it's because, I'm like, why is she grabbing my hand? She wants me to steady her, because she can't stand there on one foot. Um, fill all the gaps, and then paint it all, and hopefully it will look what are you doing? nice, because at the moment, it looks awful. So you take the chicken out, once it's browned off, then you add all the sauces. Can I do that? And then you add the chicken back in. No, darling, because you can't stand very steady and I don't want you unsteady by the cooker. Um, and then you put it all back in the sauce and then you make the eggy rice and then that's your favourite dinner. Where's Sweet chilli chicken and eggy rice. There we go. Are you, are you going to help Daddy? I don't know what she's doing. What are you doing, Sienna? We did have a gap. Little Miss Gappy. <laughs> What's wrong? We've got far too teeth there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have that many teeth left. I can't my teeth every day. You count your teeth every day? Yeah. Oh. Teeth only missing. Teeth only missing? What, in case they just act, fell out and you didn't even realise? Yeah. Not sure that would happen. Right, light soy sauce. Um, sriracha. I need a Darling, I need to get in the cupboard. If you... Sriracha. I don't want too much sriracha, do you? Because it gets too chilly for you. Sweet chilli. Can I put a bit in there? Uh-huh. How much? Just a, a bit of a glug. Big right. glug. About the same as the sriracha. About the same as that sriracha I put in. That's it. A bit more? A little bit more? Tiny bit more. That's it. Perfect. And now I need some ginger and some garlic, which is in the cupboard that you've just covered up with the bench. We need lazy garlic. We should have some somewhere. Good evening guys, welcome back to Life of the Baldwins. Sorry I've not been on for a while, I've just finished um, a little stretch at work because my other chefs had uh, just using up the last bits for her holiday, for um, new holiday year starts, I had mine before, so she covered my shifts and I've covered her shifts, just so we don't have to get anyone else in, but yeah, so I've got one day left tomorrow. I'm off for three days so I can't wait for that but I am finishing the garden for tonight because it's currently dark um, I brought two packs of feather boards that was 20 feather boards that cat just made me jump yeah it was two packs of feather boards wasn't quite enough so because um, I took the old gate down and I feather boarded like just built a fence across so I'm gonna go and order probably another three more packs I reckon start off with three or four packs they're not too bad, they're about 24 quid a pack for 10 feather boards. So, because I'm not going to paint it, I brought the painting out today, but I'm not going to paint it until I've done the rest of the feather boarding, which I'll do a little bit tomorrow, and then the rest on Saturday when I'm off. So I want to try and go and do something on Sunday. Um, just been looking at trying to see if someone's got a wheelchair I can borrow for Felicity, because obviously a leg, being on it all day, just get a wheelchair. She can just sit in that and push around. Make it a lot easier. Um, so, yeah, Kaylee's at home. Um, just sorting the girls out, getting them into gym jams and that. I'm just nipping to the shop. Um, need to get some cash out for the Tough Fairy. Now I just pulled her tough out. It was so wobbly. I don't even know how it stayed in there. She was, she literally, she was eating at school today and, not school, um, 
at home, we just got home, like eating crisps and that. I'm thinking, how is that tough not fell out? I just put a little tiny bit of tissue around it. And then I said, open your mouth, she opened your mouth like that, and it was out. So, yeah, I don't know how it was in there. But yeah, so I'm gonna get some tough fairy, I'm gonna get some stir fry mix as well, because I fancy a bit of stir fry for tea. Um, because I am doing rather well at the gym at the moment. Um, starting to see changes, but not big enough for everyone else to see yet, but I can see it myself. I feel a lot fitter, but I'm gonna end it here and I will catch up with you guys soon. This will be the end of the vlog for today, as you can barely see me. And we'll see you all again soon. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you already haven't. And see you again. Bye.